that when you're in business, and especially being a female in business, you're constantly talking about branding, who you are, what you identify as, who your demographics are, what your niche is, what you specialize in. At the end of the day, anyone can create something because they've been inspired by somebody else or they can run those same footprints or steps as somebody else. In this episode, I'm sitting down with an absolute freaking boss when it comes to business and entrepreneurship. One thing that a lot of us don't have these days is focus and it's really easy to be distracted. This woman is a serial entrepreneur and a multiple business owner. One thing that I've always been told by my mentors and coaches along the way is, Katie, just don't look left, don't look right. Just keep running because what you create and what you do, you are you and no one is you. I guess that's my superpower. We talk all things about how to manage multiple businesses, how to manage your time effectively and build your empire. So how many businesses have you got now? They're all set up in multiple entities, so it sounds really confusing with all my trusts and companies and businesses. Yeah. I've got five solid. We go really into the nitty gritty of the attitude of what it really takes to not only have a successful life, but to grow a successful business. Sometimes the biggest successes are from the biggest failures. What's been your biggest failure? I'm a failure. Plus, she shares the three secret V's that you must include when it comes to your branding. But what are the three V's? Uh, you've got your feet and your visuals. You guys are going to love this episode. So if you're here for the first time, welcome to Dream Nation. And if you're coming back, I'd love to welcome you back. Now, please help me welcome the one and only Miss Katie Stevens. All right, Katie. Welcome to the podcast. Morgan, thanks for having me. I think we've talked about this for about three months. We have been trying to make this work for a while. I'm super excited to dive into all all things you've done because when I was unpacking all of your stuff and putting together a few of my notes here, it got more exciting and more exciting and more exciting. And one thing that I want to start on this, see, you've built multiple businesses already. You're in your 30s. You've been in business since, I think, probably the day you were born by the sounds of it. (laughs) Multiple businesses. You've had a seven-figure exit by 24. You've done business deals. You're doing business deals with old men by the age of 19. (laughs) And way to put it. And you've grown one of the largest female business networking groups here in Australia. So what I'm curious to know is what makes you different, the way you think, the way you act, the way you live, from the average person who's also trying to make something? Yeah, good question. Straight to the USP. What is my unique selling point? Um, What makes me different is I'm me and nobody's me, right? So it's funny because when you're in business, and especially being a female in business, you're constantly talking about branding, who you are, what you identify as um, to the market, who your demographics are, what your niche is, what you specialize in. Um, And I think at the end of the day, anyone can create something because they've been um, inspired by somebody else or they can run those same footprints or steps as somebody else. But um, one thing that I've always been told by my mentors and coaches along the way is, Katie, just don't look left, don't look right, just keep running because what you create and what you do, even if you are fueled by inspiration from others that have, may have walked similar paths, is that you are you and no one is you. I guess that's my superpower. Mm. <laughs> who, who were some of your mentors? Uh, mentors that I've had in the past, funnily enough, I've always looked up to my parents. They've carved out business on in multiple areas, in multiple industries. Um, I, I like to say it's my second language, really. Um, So from a young age, it was always just demeanor, how you treat people. And now that I'm an adult, it's funny because the most simplest of things have always stuck, which are hard to come by, but were instilled in such a young age. Like, you know, the whole business, you know, over the handshake, like our parents used to do, that obviously doesn't exist anymore. But just making sure that, you know, you treat people with kindness and at the end of the day, we're all here for a short time. So treating people well and, and looking after not just yourself and, and serving, so to speak, um, always comes full circle. So I'd say my business, uh, my parents are probably um, my biggest inspiration. My whole family's in business, lucky for me. Um, and a lot of my networks are. I've got friends that are in startup infancy, um, ideation phase of business. And I've got friends that are, you know, multi, multi millionaires that have, you know, acquired businesses, gone through different acquisitions and I've learned along the way. So I sort of have the best of both worlds, but I like to keep it quite diverse because it fuels different parts of probably my personality, depending on how fast I'm running at the time. Yeah. So, so the thing you're saying is, is making you different is, is leading to what makes you unique. But what I'm curious to know is like, how do you think, like as someone who's done the things you've done, right? You're in your early, early 30s, seven figure exit by 24, you multiple businesses. You just sort of sound like the person who you have an idea and you just go for it. There's no blocks, there's no fears, there's no doubts, or is there? 
Um, you know, good question. I used to say, say yes, work the rest out later. That's a um, ready fire it's aim. It's got me in trouble a few times. <laughs> <laughs> I always say uh, it's always easier to apologize and ask for forgiveness. forgiveness. Yeah, 100%. And um, yeah, in a lot of respects, I mean, that's probably what's got me to just get shit done, so to speak. You know, I think... If fear, well, I don't know, fear is an emotion, like what people think of you and well, what is fear? I mean, I don't even really sit there and think about what it is because for me, I'm more fearful of not trying and knowing what the outcome could be. I'm more fearful of going, well, what happens if I'm in my 30s, 40s, 50s? And I go, I should have done this 10 years ago, um, but didn't. So um, I guess that's probably the most, the biggest driver for me. I, I am extrinsically driven, also intrinsically on on different levels, but I um, I think it's sort of, it's funny because I was having a chat with my girlfriends um, last week about this and we we're saying that, you know, once you become a mother and I'm not a mother yet, but once you become a mother, things change and you start, you know, considering your children and, you know, maybe you wouldn't do those things or you wouldn't go on those rides at the fair because what happens if it broke and all these, you know, fear mindset sort of slips in. And I sat there and I was thinking, why am I different or why do I think the way I think now versus what I thought, how I thought when I was in my 20s? And the truth is I, I probably had a lot less fear when I was in my 20s. I was just, like I just said before, say yes, work the rest out later. I was so fixated on what could be the goal, the future, the next step, and then I get there and then and then and then um, that I probably didn't really live much in the present at the time or in the past. Um, so it just led me to the next thing. And I think when you slow down, which is probably arguable, um, but that's when you process things um, and that's when you pull things apart and look, there's pros and cons for everything. But if you you know overanalyze things, then you start st- stepping into a mindset where perhaps you're more you know fixated than to be open to go, you know what, I'm just going to run with it and see what happens because sometimes the biggest successes are from the biggest failures. Right. What's been your biggest failure? Well, on failure, <laughs> I don't know that I can pinpoint something that has been super pivotal to actually completely change who I am. I've lost friends outside of business. Well, I've lost friends and, you know, been there for their last, you know, breaths of life. And that's probably instilled massive um, determination and inspiration for me of where I'm at. But when it comes to failure, I mean, I've had, what do you call it, some pinpoint or pivotal movements in business, if we're talking about business. Um, one of them, the first one that comes to mind would probably be when I was running my promotional modeling agency and, um, I started and built that up when I was 19 and I grew it to about 1500 staff and I had a lot of 1500 staff. Yeah. Holy shit. Just here in Australia. Yeah. Just as we worked in with mother agencies and sent, um, some of our models over to like Milan and Paris and whatnot. But, um, just in the show, we had quite a big database and, um, we managed all of them. Were you like the manager or did you play a different we role? Had, we had managers, yeah. yeah. God damn. So I, um, I had this one moment and it was actually quite pivotal if you want to talk about um, yeah. failure, but we had big key accounts. So think um, anything from big alcohol brands to trade shows to hair brands to you name it. We housed a lot of um, brands and facilitated anything from promotional work to photographic catwalk, um, all those sorts of campaigns. And um, one of my huge key accounts that literally paid every single 30 days that kept our finances running, our cash flow in check, our forecasting all good, um, they paid every 30 days. So we paid our models every single week. So, you know, our, our wages alone were upwards of anywhere from 10 to sometimes even $15,000 a week. And at that point, and that was probably even in low to medium sort of um, seasons. But um, what happened was this client actually simply just sent us an email on a Monday morning and the accounts manager said, hey, look, we've gone through some restructure. Um, Our accounts payable is now going to be extended from 30 to 90 days. And they were at that point our biggest paying client, which meant that we had no cash flow to be able to pay our models. So from paying our models weekly to then going, uh, we've got like three weeks and we have no money in our account, um, to then hope that our models would still turn up and keep working. That was a really pivotal moment where we went, um, we need to restructure our finances too. So um, that would have actually sent me under, to be honest, if we hadn't have pivoted at that time. What did you, what did you do? How did you pivot that? 
Uh, we literally just put it back onto other clients and we had to break it down where we had to call other clients and say, look, I know we've been lenient. You're a small business and we usually give you 60 day terms, but you actually need to pay 50% mm. up front and then 50%, you know, prior to the job, because that gave us more cash flow to inject, to be able to pay our models to then, you know, carry these big accounts because they were, some of them were, yeah, hundreds of thousands of dollars and we couldn't afford to lose them as a client, but then we couldn't afford to carry them as a client when we couldn't afford to pay our staff. Oh. What, what was your first business? Was that your first business? Well, my first business, Morgan, was come at the ripe age of, um, I think I was seven. Yes. <laughs> and I was picking flowers. No, I used to actually sell flowers, um, still flowers. Steal from them from the neighbours, sell them back to them. Yeah. That was where I got caught out. I forgot what, what house I took the flowers from. But um, no, my very first business, actually, funnily enough, because it has come full circle, 15 odd years later, was here on the Gold Coast and um, it was actually a mobile spray tanning business. And I had done beauty, actually my education background in university was, um, degree was French teaching. And so I did that, come back and I, at university I ended up being a bit of a dropout, I dropped out, not a bit of a dropout, but I dropped out of university and, um, and then I went back into beauty. So I worked with my sister, got my certification and I was like, what's a business that I don't have to work for anyone, I can make some quick money and I can get trained really quick and easy and be really good at it. Um, and that was spray tanning. So I literally had like a pop-up spray tan tan in my boot. I went and did fly drops back when it was, wasn't illegal to do at the shopping centers. Yeah. I, um, I couldn't even afford to get like colored print. So I'd get it printed black ink on colored <laughs> paper and chop it up into three. And I'd go put on all the windscreens at Pacific Fair shopping center. And, um, I work out that if I dropped a hundred, I might get like, you know, 20 calls that might transact to like 10 people and spray tans. And then I used to drive to people's house and spray tan them from basically their bathrooms. Yeah. And then now you've taken that. So we we're talking before we recorded, you've still got that business happening at the moment, right? But you've revolutionized it. Like you're telling me something, explain how, how has that business now transitioned into what you're doing now? Yeah. With sprayed. So I think it was probably a little bit of a um, post or during the pandemic, it sort of come to to mind. And it was something I always wanted to dabble in because I've been traveling the world, spray tanning, um, doing translation work, working with beauty teams for fitness shows and things like that for the last sort of six, seven years. And um, just a lot of hosting work in between. But when I... I can't even say I exited that small startup business. It was just the fact I closed the tent one day and got busy doing other things. <laughs> so when it come full circle again, uh, only just three years ago, is, you know, we're in a pandemic and you've got all these restrictions of, you know, being contactless and not coming close to people and all these things. And you're seeing people be able to get their hair done but and they're allowed to go to gyms on and off periodically depending on lockdowns. And I was like, why can't people go and get, you know, some sort of beauty treatment that makes them feel like confident in their skin, makes them walk out the door it can be self-serve they can just tap a buzz you know how you scan at the gym door and you go in anytime 24-hour business model and I was like well if I can get that model and I can integrate it into beauty what would the treatments be that I selfishly want and um, that was spray tanning and light therapy so I actually started uh, sprayed yeah three years ago I opened the first one uh, about two and a half years ago in Mount Gravatt in Brisbane and so it's in a shopping center is it it's it's its own standalone it's its own standalone studio. Um, studio. So it's got two spray tan rooms with the private automated booth. So you basically, from the palm of your hand, get your phone, join it. We've got an app. So you join the app, you create an account, you can buy a casual pass. It's a bit of a hybrid model. So you can be a member, you can pay as you go. As long as you're prepaid, you've done all the security checks and you can enter and get a spray tan at 3 a.m. in the morning. That is so insane. In the afternoon. Yeah. I love so. that because that's like just so... Are you one of the first here in Australia to do that? Are there other ones like you here? It is the first beauty studio with encompassing light therapy, spray tanning, and we've got also got a zero gravity massage chair as well. That is actually the first one on the app, the integration that exists. Wow. Yeah. How, so how many stores have you got set up? We've just opened the second one. So I opened Mermaid Beach down here on the Gold Coast. Um, gosh, we're not even a year yet. We're just oh, it's super new. Yeah. yeah. So we're is this, two. are you franchising this or are you just going to take over? What, what's, what's your, how's it? This is like the yeah, yeah. question. Stay tuned. Um, no, we have lots coming up. So at this point, we, I, when it comes to business, you've got to know your numbers, right? I, that's probably something that naturally I'm not drawn towards because I love being the face of the brand. I love branding. I love all the exercises of the aesthetics and, you know, um, worrying about consumers and customer service and marketing journey. So when it comes to knowing your numbers, it's so important and vital, especially when it's a bricks and mortar business. So um, 
I mean, a couple of years in, there's so many things that you need to sort of test and trial behind the closed doors before you can start, you know, putting the business into the hands of somebody else. Um, but yeah, absolutely. There's definitely lots more layers coming. I'm, I'm excited to see that. That sounds yeah. cool. Um, Anytime. <laughs> I'll come, get, I, <laughs> come get my spray tan on. Um, so another thing is, so you're a multi-purpose entrepreneur. You've got that, you've got multiple things happening and I want to sort of dive into a few of them. But one of the things you do, you're also coaching and mentoring other people to start their own businesses and crash it in business, right? So I'm curious yeah. to know, what is more important when it comes to business, branding or marketing? Straight up, I think that they integrate. I think they both come hand in hand together, but you need to have a brand before you have anything to market. And I say that not from just coming from a personal sense, because that can be quite a how long's a piece of string Mm -hmm. sort of question. I mean, if you're just going to launch an e-com business, find something that's trending on Amazon and plug and play and off you go, then look, marketing's everything, but you've got to have a consistent brand. And that sounds silly to say when it comes to like the finer details, but if you click on any website, you want to know that throughout the website, the colors, and we're talking like basic color palettes and stuff are on par, that it doesn't look like it's just something that's whipped up from, you know, someone in primary school potentially. Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah. Back to your question, branding or marketing, they do go hand in hand, but I guess it depends on what business or what industry you're in. If you're going to be in coaching, like who are you? What are you about? Like that comes down to, you know, your three your three Vs that I actually coach in my um, course. What are the, what are the three Vs? Uh, your values, your vision, and your visuals. So the values of the company? Yes. Or if you're your own brand, it's obviously who you are, your identity, um, but mainly, yeah, the business. Well, again, so. values. Vision. Vision. And visuals. Aesthetics. So this is we're talking about branding, right? Yep. So you're getting people to get their values correct, their vision. How 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 far how far in advance are you vision casting for people? What do you recommend for people? I don't think there's a recommendation for how far you have to actually have a vision, depending on where you're at in your if you want to call it entrepreneurship a journey or your business journey. Um, look, you always need to know what you want to do um, or what your key strengths are. And if you know what your key weaknesses are, even better because you can work out how to plug and play people in those roles. Um, and then maybe what's the end game? So it could go either way. If you've got a fork in the road, do you exit it? Do you? Is it a quick you know, turnaround econ business? I mean, we are in the world now where a lot of people have actually got a lot of friends that will just you know hit those hero products, run with a business name, shut it down, start another one, shut it down, start another one Mm -hmm. if it's a long business game i mean what's the journey on that as well so the vision can be arguably on a different i guess time length a scale um i'm pretty strong with what my vision is in life or my mission so to speak but when it comes to each business i always will have several options because you know if one doesn't work out how can you pivot and move if you need to you know move things quickly or or whatnot change direction so let's say someone listening to this watching this right now they have got a business they're kind of going maybe they're making two thousand bucks a month it's like a side hustle what is the more like what is the thing they need to focus on to actually get off the ground because what i see a lot is people just getting so distracted by a lot of shit trying to do things that might be like 10 steps ahead of what they should be doing right now mm-hmm. what is like what, what should the early 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 stage entrepreneurs business owners be focused on just to really get their business off the ground Yeah, I mean, one thing that a lot of us don't have these days is focus and it's really easy to be distracted. It's really easy, like you said, you know, $2,000 a month as a side hustle. Well, how serious are you? If you're happy just, you know, making $2,000 a month and you've got your everyday job, but that just happens to be a passion of yours on the side and it's better that than being at the pub drinking, sure, I think that's great. Um, But if you wanted to really get your ducks in line and what you should be doing is you need to be clear and you need to have clarity. And you know, it can be a bit hoo-ha these days with everyone throwing things around about, you know, mental clarity and taking time out and self-love and self this and yada, yada, yada. But you need actually to be able to disconnect to reconnect. And for me, my biggest ideas could come with my head in a hole at a massage, you know, um, yeah. on a massage table. I wish I could take a notepad. Reset. Yeah, yeah, 100%. I'm like, can you remove the candle from under there yeah. and give me like a notepad? Yeah, absolutely. But I think you need to... Um, one focus, even if it's not a super long period of time, but no phones, no technology, completely disconnect, whether that's at the beach, in your backyard, child-free, dog-free, distraction-free, noise-free, and just sit in that. Um, And determination. I think there's, you know, having grit and determination is, is unsurpassable and it can be easily excused these days for, well, I am determined, it's just that. And I, I'm naturally someone that has grit. However, this thing happened. Um, and I think that that's a non-negotiable. One thing I say to people is the bit, 
probably the first thing that's really going to help them have a quantum leap in their attitude is avoiding three things. They got to avoid blaming, complaining, and justifying. Because if they're going to blame other people, they're putting everything outside themselves. And it's not me, it's not me, it's, it's this, this happened. Or if they go to complain, they're focusing on all the things that are not working and they're just going to bring more of that into their life. The third one is like what you just said then, justifying. And I see this kill more dreams than anything else because whenever we justify, the words that follow because will actually cement as a new belief and we'll start to then on, from that moment on, start to collect evidence to reinforce that new belief. So if we say, oh, but I wish I, you know, I could do what you're doing, Katie, but you don't understand because I've got these kids. Yeah. Now what happens is, well, you can't be as successful as Katie because you're a mother or because you're a father. Then every single time you see the kids get in the way of or drain your energy or whatever, it reinforces it again. So being able to catch what you just said then is like justifying. I see it kills so many freaking dreams. A hundred percent. And I think it's, you know, um, what you think you become, right? And that's one thing I always say is if you can literally like see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hand. Mm. The only thing, the only barrier that between those two things is you. Um, support systems is huge as well because I think that a lot of people uh, may feel that they're supported, but support comes in so many different realms and working out who and where those people are strategically placed in your life, not for just the benefit of yourself, but oh, for your business, but for, you know, mental health, if you want to talk about that as well, you know, for your future, for your mindset, for your business, for your operations, for your finances, for, you know, profitability at the end of the day. Um, I think it all, yeah, it coincides, but yeah, quantum leaps for sure. So on your journey, you've been through, I saw that you went through a hard heartbreak while you're in the middle of growing a business. And I'm also going to assume that there's been countless of other just setbacks, challenges, obstacles, and just so many things that just come up that you're not expecting. What goes through the mind of Katie when massive obstacles like that happen that are unexpected? I'm actually trying to think of that heartbreak. I'm like, that must have been many versions of me ago. I don't know where you read that. About 19. Um Okay. While well, you were building your agency yeah. in Vegas. Gotcha. Okay. I know more about you than you. <laughs> I'm just trying to take him a trip down memory lane. Um, you know, I really struggle and I still do. I'll be the first to put my hand up to say I struggle to be present when I'm so excited for what could be. And it, not that I chase materialistic things, but I just get excited of the endless possibilities of who I could talk to. I'm the person that walks in the room that just gets excited by energy. And I feel gravitated to people that have a high energy or that sort of have that similar vibration. And then I go home and I'm like, I am so energized. I'm full of life. Let's go. Let's you know create business. Let's you know level up in life. Opposed to, you know, I've got friends and networks where they'll be like, oh my God, I just need a week off. Like I just feel so depleted of energy of being around people. Um, but it does come back to mindset. And I think, you know, if you don't actually take a chance in life or what you want, then you don't really have a chance. So similar to what I just said before is seeing people at the end of their life. And I know it probably sounds a little bit, you know, dark saying that, but it's true is that um, the what coulda, shoulda, woulda, but isn't is probably what is my main piv- pivotal movement, movement for having that like cut through mindset. Um as I've gotten older, and I think it probably helped bring another business to fruition was my journals and my stationery collection, is that I was going through another heartbreak. Um, no, I actually can't remember the details of it, but there was a lot going going on in my life in that time, and I needed to just slow down to actually reset. And I remember thinking, God, this is really hard to just be. And I remember just doing the sensations of what can I smell, what can I feel, you know, all these sorts of things. Into so the, writing into, these? To, well, it led me to write it. And at the time I was like, right, put music in my ears, love Eminem, any of his lyrics, that will keep me, you know, uh, I guess um, preoccupied than what's going on in my real life. Go to the gym, train, sweat, whatever, move um, move some um, frustration, get some endorphins going. And, um, and then I started journaling and I started writing down. I started creating my own prompts and I started Googling and I was like, give me some more prompts, give me something else. What can I focus on? What do I want to do just today? Because thinking about what I could do for that week or that month, or, you know, even longer, it just seemed to be too hard. It was almost like just come back to putting one foot in front of the other. And 
even though I felt like at the time I was getting drawn backwards, one step or maybe two steps backwards actually is what catapulted me 10 steps forward. Because then when I would share that on my Instagram stories, I was like, oh, this is actually relatable to other people because people would DM me back and say, oh my gosh, where'd you get that you know, journal from? And it actually wasn't a journal. It was just a book I bought from Kmart or something and I was just writing in it. And I was like, oh, this is interesting because there's obviously some sort of desire or need on the market for people that are, you know, like me, Googling, you know, prompts on Pinterest and then writing them into my notepad. And that's sort of what led me to go, well, I think I could actually create a journal from this. Um, And funnily enough, my publisher, I think you've actually had on your podcast, Susan Dean. Oh, no way. Yeah. So she did my whole collection, um, her and the team. Fantastic. We did notepads, pens, pop sockets for phones, all that sort of stuff. And then that obviously then complimented my mind in her business events because then that was something that we could add value and give into the goodie bags and things like that. What's up, Dream Nation? Have you ever wondered how far ahead your life would have already been if you had got access to this type of content at a younger age? Look, this is why I need your help. I'm trying to build the number one personal development platform out there to teach you guys the tips, tricks, and attitude of what it takes to live your dream life and to bring the type of education that we all wish we had in school. This show only grows by word of mouth and new subscribers. So it would mean the world to me if you could smash that subscribe button right now, leave us a five-star written review or drop a comment below and share this episode with a friend. I would be forever grateful. All right, now let's get back into this episode. Wow, okay, so through one of the challenges, you tried to solve your own problem, you did it, and then through that, create another is it a business or is it just another product in your product suite? I had never had a product before that I was actually selling. So yeah. first of that, it doesn't have its own business entity, but it's tied in with minding her business. It's on my personal brand and Katie Stevens website. So I sell. Essentially that's the e com. So. so cool. Yeah. Has there any been has there been any times that you can remember where you've legitimately thought that it's just not for you, or have you ever thought like, I just fuck this, I don't get a job, or times where you've just been like no, not anymore. Uh, famous last words. I actually giggled looking at your Insta story yeah. today. Oh my God. <laughs> I feel you. It's December. For, for me, it was, it was fucking 9.55 a.m. I'm like, you know what? I'm not starting today. And I'm yeah. like, I got podcasts booked today. I have meetings booked today. I'm like, I ain't doing it. I'm like, yeah. today's not. Today's the day that I want to go become a scuba diving instructor. I just, <laughs> I'm just like, I wrote on my, I'm like, is anyone hiring? Yeah. But then I, I also know simultaneously, I think it is just like the entrepreneur mindset. Simultaneously, when I have days where I'm like, fuck everything, mm. 3.7 second, milliseconds later, I'm like, there's no way I could ever work for someone as well. Mm. And it's like, get back to it then. All right. Mm. <laughs> oh, there's definitely been times. And I think, you know, what comes up goes down. You have good months, bad months in business, in life as it is. But um, financially speaking, yeah, there's absolutely been times where I'm like, you know what? Uber's not looking too bad. I was going to make an Uber on the way to an event. I'm like, so how much do you get? What's your split? <laughs> Just kidding. Um, but, um, you know, I don't know. I don't actually think there's any job that is below or above anyone either. So for me, I'm like, well, what could I get from going and getting a, a job? Or what could I get from working with someone for someone um, to learn a new key, uh, skill set or, you know, something that I don't already sort of have in my toolkit of an entrepreneur, if you want to call it. But, um I never have and I never will work for anyone who <laughs> makes sense. Yeah, I saw that you've but never had a job. I don't even know if I'd be employable, to be honest. I don't, really, I don't know if anyone's listening that would hire me. Um, no, I mean, I casual few things here and there, but um, when I was like in school, but outside of that, no, I um, I launched my first tanning business. I think I was like 18 um, and then went straight into the modeling industry, uh, the modeling industry and then promotional business. So, So there has been times where you've been like just – roadblocks where you've just contemplated closing business not wanting to do it or yeah and I've got a couple of key books that I really like to knuckle down and read at these points because yeah. I feel like when some people say things come in threes don't worry about it everything three good good things three bad things yada yada but I'm like it's also like stacking right it's one problem after another after another and then your mindset shifts going hang on a second I'll show resilience and I'll level up and then it's something else something else and you go right I'm starting to feel a bit exhausted then you go do the I'm defeated then you go into the ones that you were talking about before and there's like I, I don't actually know I'm sure there's some science behind it but you know you go into all this you know what I actually can't go back to where I was or even I can't go any other way up from here because it's just too hard um but coming back to that mindset you saying earlier that you shifted your mindset in 3.7 milliseconds or whatever it was um i think that when you've got it in your blood and you know there's no other way um you know 
I don't know, what's a comparison to that? You look at I, my um, fiance puts on these crazy, what's his name, David Attenborough shows, yeah. and there's all these hunting and stuff. And the, I'm sitting there going, this actually is relative when it comes to like business and things like that. I'm like, at the end of the day, if these animals don't hunt, they don't eat, right? I'm like, if I don't work and put in the effort, then, you know, what's the repercussion of that? Because that becomes far more of a, a pain if you want to call it a fear as well, but that becomes far more of a, a pain than a perp- than you know to better myself and actually create more purpose. So yeah, I think for me, so before I got into entrepreneurship, I started my first business at twenty one. I was a carpenter before, and I was literally just telling Jack as because it's like a super hot day today, and I'm like, I remember I used to be working in forty two degree heat for fourteen hours a day, like carrying roofs like walking on a 70 mil frame like this, like so dangerous, carrying fucking roos in this heat. Oh, wow. And I would do that and I'd just be so exhausted and so like like emo about my life. Just be like, this fucking sucks. Mm. And that was my life for, I worked for five years. Like there's people listening to just be like, fucking, you know, <laughs> I get it, right? But, you know, if you're still there, then do something about it, right? That's what I did. And 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 I was just, I think back to that. And that that's always been the thing that that's, when I've hit times where I'm like, I'm not, fuck this. I always just think, well, it's 10 times better than what I was ever doing. Mm. Like at, at that job, you know, and it was especially my early days of getting it going. Um, of When I'd come home from a job, working 12 to 14 hours a day, and I'd come home and work on my side hustle. And th- there wasn't a fiber in my body that wanted to. I was like, all I want to do is put on Netflix and relax because I'm fucked. Mm. And because of that, that was the thing that made me go, yeah, and because you're so exhausted and you don't want to do anything, that's why you must do it right now. Yeah. And I remember really buckling down for about eight months uh, doing that where I was, I was sleeping like maybe four hours a day or something because that's just the time I had. But I wanted it so bad to, to get out of it that I used that time to get out of it. Eight months, got out of it, moved to Mexico, about 23, and then that was always the thing coming back. It's like whenever there's hard times in business, yeah. there was always way more hard times Mm. so the thing is i think it's the paradox people believe that they can actually avoid hard at some point they think that maybe one day i'll be able to avoid hard things it's not the case at all i think it's a matter of we get to choose our hard so if i'm going to go back to the job site that's hard or i can handle all the problems and all the bullshit that comes in business that's also hard but i get to choose my hard yeah because the hards are hard but tell you what the easy like it's it's a lot easier to fly mm. first class. <laughs> I yeah. tell you, yeah. when when I when I have champagne on a plane, I'm like, oh, it's worth it. <laughs> it's worth I think it. That's the thing, right? You have those moments. So you're like, you know what? And they're the times you need to, which I had to work really hard to celebrate, is that when you are in those highs and you are having those moments with your champagne in first class, for example, um, that you can actually go, you know what? I might not have made it to what my capacity is, my true potential, all these sort of areas and, and, and ways and means of what we think that we're, you know, truly capable of or what we want in life. But those moments are like hugely pivotal compared to what could I have been if I didn't make that change? Mm-hmm. What happened? And I did have that day, even when I was exiting um, my agency, I, I used to just honestly, like it sounds like a dream looking back, talking numbers, but I, I didn't have a life. Like I worked around the clock. I had a couch at the front reception. I cannot tell you how many times I had just had a quick nap during the middle of the night and up I got and just back on the keys. And that was just the life I, I live. And to be honest, I was probably close to burnout that many times. I couldn't even tell you. Um, but it's yeah I, I think it's it comes down to choose your hard because the thought of going and working for someone probably you know at times would have been the better idea or the better option to do financially or even in other areas but I just knew that that's there was more there was more, yeah. more to give that's the thing that's so important because a lot of entrepreneurs nowadays and I did the same thing for years until I call myself being like Morgan you being an idiot a lot of entrepreneurs will talk about the things that they do now not what they did mm-hmm. so like the fact you had a couch and you slept on that and then went back to work. Because that's, and and like you mentioned before, this day and age, a lot of people think it's like, oh, I've got to do the whole self-care thing and the breath work thing and the meditation. It's all great. And like in a perfect reality, yes, of course, create your dream life, build your business, do all these things without putting out, of course. However, in the beginning, it's kind of just a bit of a myth. Mm-hmm. Like there's, I don't think I've met anyone that hasn't gone through a period of, I worked my absolute fucking ass off and slept on couches or didn't sleep much or had to do this. I had to sacrifice so much for years. And then they get to the point where like, yeah, it actually nearly killed me. 
and then I figure out all these other things. Then th- that person now teaches from that perspective, here's how you should do it. But little Johnny who's starting his business is like, oh, okay, so I can work my 10 hours a day, come home, I've got to relax now. Mm-hmm. i got to do my one hour of you know, self-care practices and i got to do all these things. And then, oh, now it's time for bed. I'll work on my business tomorrow. Mm. You know, or I'll do it when it feels right. And it's just it's just such it's a pretty short lived for Johnny, little Johnny. <laughs> There's a lot more layers to that. So hopefully little Johnny has lots of friends that can help out as we all need to. It's a, it's time. it's just facts. But like I said, like I, I I remember going through it was about a solid eight months. But then that's also the thing. I worked for myself for eight months and then I had I was financially free, moved to Mexico, haven't worked since twenty three. Like and I was willing to sacrifice that. I'm like, I'm gonna I'm gonna not sleep much, not hang out with my friends much but eight months just uh, I didn't work that out it just worked out that that's I crush it for eight months and because mm-hmm. of the all-out focus got to a point to be able to do it so yeah yeah I think a lot comes back to mindset doesn't it everything so that's why I'm curious with you so how many businesses have you got now how many businesses that's a good question um they're all set up in multiple entities so it sounds really confusing with all my trusts and companies and businesses yeah. but active different businesses um that all Funnily enough, connect is I've got five solid. Five. Yeah. A multiple in those within those companies. But yeah. yeah. So how do you how do you manage your time? I'm curious on that. Let's go there. I feel like I'm a bit of a time blocking queen. And yeah. I had to um get good at this because it would be a common question asked all the time. Oh my God, you work on so many businesses every day. Um, and the truth is I don't because I can't switch between that many different brains. Yeah. So I do actually time block my time. For example, if it's my events business, minding her business, um, and we run multiple events throughout the year, then obviously they're project based. So when we're running an event, you know that you've got your six week lead up, you know, you've got a bit of post event work as well. And then we'll have some downtime, which is usually where my focus goes straight into my next project, which might be, I run the hair and makeup for FMG, FMG beauty, which is a, um, fitness bodybuilding federation. So um, I have a team of 55 makeup artists and hairstylists, but they've only got X amount of shows per year. So then I will slip into that sort of project work. Um, I'm also a massive believer of everything automation and love ChatGPT. Um, I know that it can be just discretionary to how you use it and where it's going to take the world, but um, used for the right reasons. It is just an incredible time saver as well. Uh, but what do I spend my days? I mean, to be honest, they're not, um, yeah, working 10 hours, sitting on the couch, going to bed. Mm-hmm. Waking up the next morning saying again, I do feel like I'm always on. So when I do have my downtime, I make sure it's solid downtime. Yeah. Um, I don't feel like I need full resets and maybe as I get older, I might, but I don't feel like I need these week off vacations that are completely lavish because I do so much international travel for my work. I do have that, you know, four hours of downtime here, a full day there or whatever. And it sort of just slips into the lifestyle. Um, but every day is different. I never have one day that's the same and I'm lucky I've got a really good support team. Mm. So... So in one day, is it, is it likely like are you, I'm just trying to get into the brain of you, are you more so like looking at your year perhaps and going, where's the big things that are happening in all our businesses and you're putting your focus into certain sections throughout the year or are you still managing five different businesses each day or like, or each week or how are you it's sort all, of? Yeah, good question. Um, it's all layered. So for example, let's just put in a little box mm-hmm. that we've got um, the branding course, building her brand. We might only have three intakes in one year. So we work on those intakes until they, they're four, four to six week blocks. Um, they'll be changing to a different model next year, which is exciting, um, which will be even more condensed. And there's a lot more automation to that. But once those events have finished, then I move into other businesses and areas. So although the, although there's multiple businesses in the 24-7 spray with the spray chain, the light therapy, I mean, that's operational 24-7. So I don't have to work physically in the business every minute of the day. Um, and we do have support team, customer care service and things like that. But I certainly have my times chunked out where I overlook, you know, cash flow, forecasting, any customer service that needs my attention and things like that. So mm. every day I don't open my laptop and deal with multiple businesses. It's yeah. all scheduled. Because now how, because I'm, um, we've got a couple companies now, so, and I'm starting to also play with that going, and, and, and we run an events business as well. So you'd sort of know an events business is kind of, it's kind of like multiple businesses in once because every single event could also be its own business. Like how we how we run ours. Like we have about, like I run a massive one uh, called Dreamfest. Yeah, Dreamfest. Dreamfest is the big one that will have big multi speaker event. Um, next year it's going to go for two days. Um, 
you know, so that itself is like could be a business because it's just so much goes into it. Like we're already starting the plan now and it's going to be in September. Yeah. You know, and so I'm just always wanting to sort of optimize my focus. Um, mm-hmm. But the time blocking and I think what's really worked for me is now Mondays for me is I've told all my team, if you need a meeting with me, it's on a Monday. And if you can't get done with me on a Monday, then it waits till next Monday. Or if it's like a fucking 911, you call me, but it's like apart from that, I want to deal with all the deep shit on a Monday and then leave me alone. Yeah. I'm going to do all the rest of the stuff that I need to do. Because um, for so long, I was I was trying to go from task to task to task, like different things. Mm. And it is a thing like you get your brain into a sense of flow or momentum, really. Mm-hmm. And it's just so hard to sort of jump lanes. Yeah, 100%. And, you, you know, people say it and it's true. You can't do it all. I mean, when I was younger, I liked to believe I could do it all and I'd go around like a little energizer bunny. Um, but having clarity and to actually start from A to Z and complete a task, which is another thing, as I do, I've spoken to so many people and even just interviewing on our panels on stage. And, you know, we have had speakers go, yeah, you know what? We just work it through in the morning of. I have all the t- layout on my tasks. I tick, 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 tick. Mm-hmm. But I think it's, yeah, it's subject business specific. I guess everyone has a different role within their business, even if they are the CEO. Um, I certainly work similar to you where I'm like, right, this is where we have all the hard meetings. This where we, you know, talk deep, work it out. If there's anything I need to execute, I need to work out my week and see where I can fit that in. If not, then I'm just time blocked as to what I've got to work on and make sure I get that done. So one of the things you help people do is create an online brand. You've built an insane online brand. You've got over 100,000 followers. Um, what, what's the most important thing we need to be focusing on, especially moving into 2024? Like we're moving into the personal branding world now mm-hmm. like i know you've probably seen it coming i've seen it coming so i've been building a personal brand for a while that's why we have a personal branding agency like our podcast agency um but you look at the biggest people like the mr beasts the logan pauls they're all like using their personal brand now to create massive wealth so if people aren't focusing on branding yet they got to be yeah. so from everything you've done what is, what is the most important things we need to be focusing on to actually build a proper online brand personal brand I think the most important thing and outside of the logistics of actually starting out to work out who you are, what you want to be known for, you know, the imprint that you want to leave on the le- the earth when you leave um, and, and whatnot is the most important thing about branding is being consistent, showing up. And if we're talking about social media, but um, one thing that I would love to mention if anyone's listening, wanting to build a, a personal brand is a, it's not too late to see people. I feel like that everyone's a quote unquote micro influencer and influencer. They've got big followings. I would never be swayed by a number of someone that they have from a following because, for example, I actually removed 10,000 followers a couple of years ago um, because they just were affecting engagement. I love analytics and things like that. And they were from when I was doing bodybuilding myself for years. So um, it was more of a male audience. I'm push towards everything I do right now is obviously female dominant um, and whatnot. So I think that numbers will come. Never worry about what the following is, so to speak. Worry about the impacts that you can have serving people, offering people in your community, you know, value adds, things like that, um, teaching them things about, you know, whether they're struggles, adversities, opportunities, positive things that happen in your day, people that are actually relatable or that actually just want to learn about you. Um, that's one of the most important things when it comes to branding. But the way we are and the way we world, the world we live in now is really automation. Is if you think that you can create this huge brand on your own um, across whatever platform you want, TikTok, Instagram, um, Threads, if you want to, whichever app we're talking about is that or platform, if you want to create your own brand, you have to be consistent and you have to communicate. It's an open-ended conversation. I actually um, subscribe to um, Head of Marketing's Instagram and I get all the updates of what's coming, what they're trialing, different bits and pieces. And I love learning about that because it's not just put a static post up, sit back and wait for people to start commenting. That just doesn't happen these days. Mm. It's about integrating many chat. It's about having these automations, DM me this word, opening conversations, writing back to people. If you haven't got back time to write back to people, maybe a quick voice note here and there. But that's one thing that I've I can honestly say that it's always been really key important focus to me is that constantly keeping up with my community, keeping up with my community, why they follow me. I'll do check-ins with them. I'll do the let's chat, type in the box. I'll make sure that I just, you know, go AWOL on my stories for 24 hours to reset my analytics. And then I'll always start with polls just to kick boost um, those sorts of um, analytics and engagement again. But is, yeah, create a community is worry about don't worry about chasing the following the following will come when building a personal brand um but just know what your niche focus is are you you know it's not about what you're selling it's about who you are and how you're getting there and i think it's similar for you even running events and you know running a podcast and things like that it's 
anyone's going to want to know, hey, what's Morgan about? Oh, and I listened to this and he has rants or he, you know, he's had a retreat there. That's cool. What's that about? It creates a bit of curiosity. And then that will flow into, you know, events and ticket selling and things like that. Oh, I've seen him pop up. I've seen, you know, a few struggles. I've seen a few opportunities. I've seen how he's built his, you know, um, businesses and whatnot. And now I want to go to his events. I want to learn more. I guess mm-hmm. it's a bit of an enticer and a, and a lead gen, really. Um, but what's the purpose of having a brand, really? Because everyone wants a personal brand as well. And then comes in, you know, whether it's imposter syndrome, whether it's lack of um, momentum or motivation to even do that. But I have a lot of my clients and they might not have big followers. They've got great businesses and they'll say, oh, I just, be, you know, I need to be, build my personal brand. And I'll say, I'm all about, I mean, you've come to the right place. I'm all about personal branding. But why? Because if your business is bigger than you, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's actually really good to be able to exit down the track um, because it doesn't have a person attached to it. Mm-hmm. But there's there's multi layers to that. I think the most important thing is if you're building a personal brand is knowing your identity, knowing what you're actually showing up for and being consistent. One thing you've done really well, obviously, mining her business. How, how many community members have you got now across Australia? Uh, I think we're over about 25K. It's wild. So one of the biggest female business networking groups in Australia. What are some key things you've done to create an amazing community? Because building a community, like it's one thing to create awesome content and be like, hey, we run events, come have fun. That's one thing. But there's another thing to actually want them to want to tell their friends and then come back and love it and all of this. So if you were to really sort of think back everything you've done in there, what are some key things you've done to really build this amazing community? What the... the Actual going back one step to why I started the business is that I was sort of found myself in a really in-between phase once I exited my promotional modeling agency that I was facilitating and connecting so many people that were that were my clients or that were my friends or that were in that business um, prior to me exiting. So I would have phone calls going, oh, Katie, I need a photographer for this or would you help me with that? And I would go, yeah, yeah, I'll put you in touch with this person, that person, let's all have coffee. And, you know, you can only have a certain amount of coffee meetings a week. So it got to the point that I'd actually do small group meetups with just us girls. And I didn't do many, to be honest. It was probably less than a handful. Um, And there was this one moment where I actually couldn't make the breakfast and I just in my head assumed that everyone knew each other. And there was about 10 girls um, going to one of my girlfriend's cafes. And it was pouring rain. I was stuck in traffic and I said, look, I'm, by the time I get there, I'm going to be an hour late. The breakfast is over. You guys just have fun. And I called on one of my friends that was going. She goes, Katie, I don't even know who's going. I was like, yeah, yeah, you know, such and such and such and such and gave her a long shopping list of names. And she's like, no, don't know anyone. Fast forward, I never went to the breakfast. They all went. They had the best time without me. And then I got messages from a couple of my friends and um, – I guess you could call them associates. And um, they were like, Katie, that was incredible. Like, thank you so much for putting that on. Can you do another one? And then that put me into the mindset of going, well, what happens if I could – what would happen if I could put more women in a room that could connect with people? And in this infancy ideation or startup phase of business, a lot of men and women don't have, you know, huge capital to put in or savings to put into their own business. So how could I create and facilitate an event where people could collaborate? And it wouldn't just be, what can I get for free? It would be, hey – look, Morgan, you're a photographer. If you would take photos of, you know, my beauty products, then I would mm. give, you know, your beauty products to give to whatever, or you could use on your website these photos and say that I'm your client because we're working together, um, opposed to me forking out thousands of dollars. So um, I just did a low-key first event, um, which was actually at another um, friend of mine that opened a bar from my um, previous business. We did a lot of promotional work and things like that there. And I called him and I said, um, Mick, I need to borrow your venue. I'm just going to have a small event, maybe like 40, 50 people. Um, just can you section off an area? You know, what does it cost? But I'm starting a new business. And he's like, you know, I'll look after you. Come in. Anyway, silly me. Went to bed with the imposter syndrome, launched my ticket sales. And I went, no one's going to buy these. Like, this is just not going to go well, but that's fine. I've got heaps of friends. I'll just give them free tickets. I'll fill a room. It'll be a good day. Uh, anyway, I woke up the next day and we had completely oversold. I never put a cap on the ticket sales. And I went, how many were there? Oh my God. Well, I needed to call Mick back. And I said, I actually need your whole venue. Um, I think we were over like a hundred at that point. Yeah. And then people turned up on the day, they're trying to buy tickets. And I was like, I mean, good problems to have. But at that time, I'm like, I only have this many cupcakes. I only have this <laughs> many. Like, we sort of worked all this out. But um, And from that, I was like, right, there is a real desire for this. But for me, I was like, if you're going to a business event, I was 19 when I had my modeling agency. I went to that many networking events. I was in rooms of, you know, 
two, three, five hundred women, and I'd get sit down at this alternate drop plate breakfast where I got sat next to Mary and Susan. We had nothing in common. They're pitching to me about buying some anti-aging cream to sell to my fifteen hundred models because they thought I was just a database they wanted to tap into. And I'd go back to my desk and think to myself that was such a waste of one hundred and fifty two hundred dollar ticket yeah. for three hours. And then everyone just pitched to me, and I didn't actually get some hang out and meet anyone and everyone was so you know blacks and whites and just you know I guess not boring colors but it was really corporate and I was like I need to move when I have energy I'm walking I'm moving I'm talking so that's selfishly what I integrated in my own business I was like you know what you need a dress to impress um and then I would just have like visuals everywhere I was like how can I get them to bring their friends without sitting there with a pen and paper getting email addresses so I started just doing Instagram things on the day I was like if you tag and share this then we're giving away this right now go um and we just grew hugely super quick on socials at that time and I think there's nothing like IRL right in real life IRL In real life, IRL. (laughs) And um, when you actually get to connect with people and you can see their facial expressions and you can see their body language, you can connect with someone on a lot deeper level quicker or maybe not so much quicker um, and work out who's your tribe and find that tribe. And there are so many people, especially women, that are stay-at-home mothers that don't get to go out and you don't go to bars at 10 o'clock on a Friday night to meet new friends if you're new to the area. So you want to go to these events where you're like, you know what, I want to feel empowered, I want to feel uplifted, definitely want a glass of bubbles. And sit there and listen to an empowerment panel to go home and feel inspired, whether you have a business or not. I think that was probably our biggest um, outside of just doing those sort of aesthetic, um, I guess you'd call them visuals. Everywhere you look, you'd look on the floor and there'd be like, hey, um, I'm exactly where I'm meant to be, sort of sticker on the floor. And you'd put your high heels in it and you'd take a photo and tag and share and that sort of stuff. That's cool. Uh, oh, you go to the bathrooms. We had stickers on the mirrors. It just everywhere you look and thought the cupcakes, everything had our logo. We just made sure of it that it was just popping up constantly everywhere, and we had funny little taglines to go with it. But um, you know, we advertised as obviously it is a tax write off if you want to call it um, for your business. Um, and we encourage women to come alone. And I think once I got on my stories and I said, right. Everyone is, you know, come out, step outside of your comfort zone. Nothing good happens inside it anyway. Um, and then I brought on a team and um, of crew members and would have a team meeting in the morning. And I would say, I do not want one person getting out of the car and on their own for more than 30 seconds. So we actually scaled car parks. We had people in areas and team that they would literally be like, are you here on your own? Come with me. And they would connect people straight away. Um, so our retention rate was huge because people would come on their own. And then they would even have friends that they'd met at events you know, that they would see every time. And then you'd start having people that have friends that they'd buy tickets and say, no, actually, I'm going to go on my own to this one. They wouldn't even organize carpooling or Uber share ride or anything like that because they just actually wanted to go on their own to be in that environment where they could freely speak to whoever they want and just network with new people. You you remind me of like a female Richard Branson. Wow. Because okay. everything, everything, you know, I don't know if you know his whole story, but everything he created was because he's like, this has done shit. I'm going to do it better. Mm. Like so many of your things you've done, like the networking event, you know, you know, you're just like, this is crap. Or you're trying to figure out the journaling. I'm just going to make it better. That's like an actual just entrepreneurial mindset of just, because that's all entrepreneurs are like going through life and getting things that are already happening and making them better or just creating solutions for all the problems. Yeah. So I love it. Knowing everything you know now, but entrepreneurship, business, if you were to go back to the beginning and give any sort of business advice, what would you do differently? Um, I don't know there's anything that really stands out that I would do differently, but I would have done things quicker. Having hesitancy, holding myself back, um, having just times where I would put things to the back burner And I know that I'm like, you know, I I don't want to just be the best on the market. I want to be first to market. So when I have that innovative idea, um, yeah, speak less, do more. I think I got so excited about telling everyone, um, you know, certain business ideas or transactions in the past that when I actually get to the point of execution, that I'm like, wow, if I did this six months earlier, Mm -hmm. I could have done 10 times quicker or done 10 times more or whatever the case be. But um, that would be the biggest thing. I, I do have moments of looking back and, you know, what would you tell your younger self and things like that? is right now where I'm at in my life, I'd probably actually listen to what my younger self would tell me and that would probably change things more in a positive light. I love it. Yeah. This has been amazing. Where can everybody hang out with you on social media and find you? Yeah, good question. Um, Miss Katie Stevens. I'm always there every day. (laughs) Instagram. Every day on the gram. Yeah, website. It's all the same, Katie Stevens. 
love it. Yeah. And funny enough, I do have a <laughs> I do have a final question I ask all my guests. Uh-oh. If you were to go back to your 18 year old self mm-hmm. and give her 30 seconds of advice, what would it be? Um. Okay. 30 seconds of advice to the younger Katie. Katie, you have two ears and one mouth and you should use them in that ratio because you could learn a lot more and get a lot further opposed to always having to have the last say. 